Most people go throughout their day making decisions. What shirt to wear, pancakes or waffles, go to the gym or watch TV. But how many of these decisions are actually ours to make? Is it possible that we are built to make the decisions that we do and when we hit a certain parameter, our programming takes over and chooses the correct option? The television show Dollhouse takes the idea of programmable humans to the extreme. In the show, a company is able to erase people's personalities and replace them with whatever they want. The character Millie believes she is an average person, neighbor, and girlfriend to her neighbor Paul, totally in control of her normal life. In reality, though, she is a doll and Millie is simply a construct. While acting out her normal everyday actions, a certain parameter is triggered and she acts without her volition. Too much? Too fast? I have a message for you from inside the dollhouse. It's not funny. My name is November. Millie. Your name is Millie. The concept of carrying out an action without our conscious choice is a disturbing one but at least it seems relegated to the realm of sci-fi alone. Or is it? Michael Faraday was one of the first researchers that looked into the phenomenon of free will. He became interested in the subject as the spiritualism craze became rampant in 1853. He was particularly interested in the seances. In a seance, a group of people sit around a table with their hands resting on the top. The table would move around and spell out answers to questions. While the sitters agreed that they were pushing down on the table, they refused to believe that they were in any way controlling the table's movement. In order to prove that the sitters were in fact moving the table, Faraday put some cement on the table and a card between each sitter's hand and the cement. He could see in the cement whether the card lagged behind the table's movement or if the table lagged behind the cards. The former would prove the seance's validity, the latter that the sitters were moving the table. Lo and behold, Faraday was correct and the sitters were unwillfully moving the table. In 1963, another researcher, William Gray Walter, studied people performing actions unknowingly. His subjects sat in front of a slide projector and were told to push a button when they wanted to move to the next slide. The subjects also had electrodes placed in their brains monitoring their motor cortices. Unbeknownst to the subjects, the presentation moved to the next slide when the activity increased in the motor cortex, indicating they were about to push the button. The subjects were consistently surprised by the slide progression, saying that the slides kept moving just as they were about to tell the slides to move. Even though, though the slides were moving due to the signals from the subjects, they were unaware of their role in the event and assumed it was some kind of unknown psychic source. We can think of examples in which there is a disconnection between a voluntary action and the feeling of volition. Some mental illnesses can cause this, such as schizophrenia, moving the blame for an action onto some other outside force. Drugs or alcohol might also cause this effect to a lesser degree. These are unnerving examples where we seem no longer to have complete control of our actions, but are easy to understand. The psychologist Daniel Wegner, however, was more interested in asking the opposite question which has huge implications for how we view our ideas of reality and consciousness. He asked if the sense of willing an action can occur for one we are not, in fact, responsible for. In one experiment he used to test this idea, participants stood in front of a mirror. Their hands were out of view, replaced by those of a volunteer standing behind them. Instructions were given to the participants to move their hands, and just afterward, the hands carried out those same actions. The participants reported that, amazingly, they felt a sense of volition for these moves. Despite their knowledge to the contrary, disconnected actions and thoughts seem to be working together. What if this is how we are always experiencing the world? Our sense of self is largely built around the idea that our consciousness is what causes our actions. But what if this wasn't so? As Wegner put it, our sense of being a conscious agent who does things comes at a cost of being technically wrong all the time. He explains that both thought and action are caused by unconscious events which may or may not be related. This connection is not known. What does not occur, though, is a direct connection between the thought and a subsequent action. When we move our arms in the mirror, our brain is both unconsciously causing the physical action as well as consciously causing the thought to occur. As these two things occur, we mentally tie them together, believing that the thought consciously caused the action. Like the participants in William Walter's experiment, the brain caused both the action and the thought, but 
not necessarily at the same time. As Wegner puts it, the experience of willing an act arises from interpreting one's thoughts as the cause of the act. For an action to truly be conscious, the thought must occur before the action, the thought must be consistent with the action, and it cannot be accompanied by other causes. Isolated and following a clear sequential order, we might be able to call an action truly thought forth. Otherwise, the connection is not so clear. What does this mean for our everyday actions in our everyday life? Are we living in a truly conscious way, or are we on rails? Does this consciousness of ours tell the body where it is going, or is it that sense of consciousness just playing catch up with thoughts and actions occurring outside of its control? Is our everyday experience nothing but the illusions of control with every moment defined by the parameters our mind puts forth?